Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you how to use the JSON column in Flash SQL Alchemy when you're dealing with a Postgres database. So the benefit of a JSON column in the Postgres database is you kind of get some of the features of a NoSQL database while still being within a SQL database. So if you have to store some more unstructured data, then you can put it inside of a JSON column instead of your regular columns, and then you can query that JSON in a particular way that I'll show you in this video. So the first thing to know is I have the database set up already. It has nothing in it, but I have a database and I have a virtual environment along with uh, some stuff for setting up Flask. I need to go ahead and install both Flask and Flask SQL Alchemy. So I'll install those now. Okay, so I have both of those installed. And because I'll be using Postgres, I have to install Psycho PG2. So Psycho, Psycho PG2. And on my computer, I can't get the regular Psycho PG2 library to work. It won't compile correctly. So I can install the binary. So it just depends on your system, but either one should work for you if you can install them. And then now that I have those installed, I should be able to uh, get started on this example. So I have my database object created. And what I want to do is I want to create an example table. And this table is going to have the column in it. So db.model, and of course I need to create a primary key field. So db.column, uh, db integer, if I can spell integer, and it's gonna be primary key equals true. Okay, so now I want to add a JSON column, right? So I'll add this JSON column, and I'll say db column. But what do I pass here? So I can't use something like db.json, that would be too easy. So what I need to do is I need to import JSON from uh, SQL Alchemy. So to do this, I'll say from sqlalchemy.dialects. So dialects is just for each database that it supports. In this case, I want PostgreSQL, and I want to import JSON. So all capital letters, and then I can take that and I can put it here as a type of the column. So now that I have that, I can go ahead and create the tables. So I'll just call db.createAll, and that's gonna create it for me. So let me run my app. So Python app.py, it should create the column for me. And I have my dbeaver here open. And what I'll do is I'll refresh and we see this example table. If I open it up and look at the DDL, I see uh, JSON column, JSON. So we know it is working correctly. So now let's try inserting some data into this. So what I'll do is I'll create a function and I'll call it um, insert data. And we'll say example one is going to be equal to example. And for the JSON column, what you're going to pass here is something that can be interpreted as JSON data. So in Python, that's just dictionaries and lists and then, you know, the, the primitives that you can put inside of them. So for example, I can have a key and then value, right? I can have my array and then I can have an array of things. So one, two, three, four, well, let's put some different numbers so it's a better example. 39, uh, 323, 83, 382, and 102. So I have five things in there. And then I'll add one more for this one. And I'll say um, objects. And then I'll have another dictionary here. So let's call this um, name and then Anthony, okay? So I'm going to insert all of this into my JSON column, and this is going to be example one. So example one, or it should be db.session add example one, and then I can do db session commit, and I can just run this, so insert data. So I'll run the script again, and it should have inserted. So let me go over to the database browser. I'll go to columns, or actually not columns, but data up here. And we see, I can see all the, the data that I inserted just a second ago. So this is JSON data. And now if I want to query for this, I can. So let me write a query. So a query will say uh, example, query first. So this is going to give us the first example and the only example that I have in my database. So I'll just say example one again here. And what I'll do is I'll print example one and then I'll print example dot JSON column. And then finally I'll print the type of 
example one dot JSON column. So we can see these three things. So query, and I'll run this. And now what we see is the first thing is example one. So this is the object that represents the first row in the table. The second is the actual data inside of the JSON column. So we see it's this, it's this dictionary that we created that has the list my array and then objects named Anthony inside of it. And then we see the, the type of it is a dictionary. So calling a type returns this. So what if I want to you know, check to see if it has a certain value? So for example, I want to get the key right here. So I want to return value. So I can do that easily. So let me just get rid of these or let me comment them out. And the JSON column is pretty easy since it's a dictionary. I can just say key like that. And now when I run this, I should get value, which I do. And as you can imagine, if I do uh, my array, I get that array that I have those five numbers. And I can also say, five, or not five, there aren't that many, four. It will give me the last element in the array, 102, and we see that there. So now let's try a query that has a filter in it. So what I wanna do is I'll say, uh, I'll have example one equals example, query, and then filter. And then what I want to do is I want to filter using that JSON column. So for example, I can look at the key value and if the value of key is value, then it will return that. If it isn't, then it will ignore it. So if I go JSON column, and then what I have to do here is say key, and then as text, so I can do a direct comparison. So this should be value, return first, and then print example one. So if this finds anything using this filter, it will have something in example one. If it doesn't find anything, it will be none. So let me run it. And we see it returns example one. So it finds it, it finds that key has the value of value. Now let me try a different one. So another value. So this does not exist in our JSON object. So I should get none. And that's exactly what I get. But what if I wanted to get the name? So like, what if I say, Anthony, can I do this? So. Uh, objects, and then we have name. And we get Anthony here just as we expect. So we can compare the value here in the objects key and then the name key, and we get Anthony. And of course, if I change this to something else, I get a different value. So when you run queries like this, the expectation is all the data in each column has the same kind of format. Otherwise, it doesn't really make sense to run queries because it won't be valid for some of the records. So that's one of the things that you have to keep in mind. But there's nothing that's going to stop you from having invalid values in terms of the filters that you can write. So it's up to you to make sure that each record that you insert into the database has the same structure overall. So now what I'll do is I'll create a second one. So let me copy example one. And like I said, I'm gonna use the same structure. So this will be example two. I'll comment out example one. So the key is now going to be new value. My array will have some different numbers. So 23, 676, 45, 88, and 99 and then inside of objects i'll change the name to brian okay so i'm going to add this i'll insert data here let me run this should insert data and if i go back to the table and refresh i can find refresh we see i have the new data in here so i'll go back and i'll run a query so now I can say something like example, because it can be either one or two now. I want to print out the one that has Brian as objects and name. So I'll run this and it didn't return anything because I'm using the wrong function. So let's try this again. 
So now I get example two. And if I change this back to uh, Anthony, I'll get example one. And since I accidentally inserted another record with Brian, if I do this, so results, and I do dot all, and then Brian, I should get two now. And this should be results. And I guess it didn't save the second one in the database. Let me see. Yeah, let me try that again. So insert data and then query. And I should get two now. Yeah. So through the magic of video editing, I removed the ones that I did before. But example two and example 10 show me that I have multiple values in the database with Brian as objects and name. So this is a really simple example. And of course, you know, you can make it more complicated, but I just want to introduce you to this. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.